Hello, welcome to Jani.tv. I'm very excited to bring you a series of walkthroughs and tutorials based on the recently announced Amazon Bedrock and Titan. They are some of the exciting technologies that bring serverless generative AI to developers. So I have explored it to implement Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG with uh, open search vector database, open search serverless vector database and uh, using the Titan embeddings model. So in the next three or four tutorials, I'm going to walk you through uh, all things about Amazon Bedrock and Titan. Stay tuned. All right, so we are in the console and you can see Amazon Bedrock as one of my recently visited services. So when we click on this, and currently I'm in the Hyderabad region, uh, which is my hometown. So the first thing is that you notice the Bedrock service is available only in certain regions. And uh, based on my experience, I found US West to be the most complete. Other regions do have Bedrock runtime, but all the models and all the capabilities like the knowledge base and the agents are available only in US West. So let's switch to US West. And uh, here is the Bedrock homepage within the console. And when we click on getting started, uh, you actually see the navigation bar and then the landing page. So I'm going to spend the next few minutes walking you through the menu bar and various options that are available within Bedrock. So first thing first, your interface currently shows everything that you can do with Bedrock. So foundation models, so think of this as the model catalog and then the playground, which is what exactly it, it, it says. It is the same thing uh, where you can open a playground uh, for text, chat and image, customizations, orchestrations and deployment. So let's explore each of them. Uh, so there are quite a few examples. So these are all example prompts and then you actually see the responses that are generated. There are various models and various use cases. For example, the first one is Titan Text G1, which is one of the foundation models from Amazon. And then uh, the article summarization use case is by AI21 Labs. So similarly, there are a variety of use cases that you can explore here. So you can uh, select any of this and then uh, go to uh, the playground. So in the playground, you can try the prompts and then execute. So if you are coming from OpenAI background or Azure OpenAI, this is very similar to the OpenAI playground. So uh, it's exactly the same. You can see uh, the, the parameters that you can tune, like the temperature, top P, top K, and so on. These change based on the foundation model that you're using. So that's the First thing where you get started with the, the foundation models and the playground. You can take a look at the entire catalog by clicking on providers. So the AI21 labs, they have two models, uh, Jurassic 2 Ultra and Jurassic 2 Mid. These two differ in their capabilities. Amazon has two models. One is the uh, text embeddings based on Titan. And the other one is Titan Text G1. This is currently in preview. And uh, this is one of the LLMs that you can use. Anthropic has Claude family of models. So 1.3 V2 and Claude Instant V1.2. Cohere has Command and Stability AI has Stable Diffusion Excel. So all these are the models that you can uh, consume within Bedrock, but only in US West 2. So you can also create custom models that is basically fine tuning. Uh, so you can take a base model and then you can fine tune uh, the model with your custom data set. So you can choose one of the base models. At this point, you can only do it for Titan Text G1 and then give the custom name, uh, the job configuration which is essentially the name of the job and then the input s3 bucket where you uploaded your json l data 
and then optionally another data set that has the validation and a set of hyperparameters like epochs, batch size, learning rate, the learning rate warm-up steps and so on. And ultimately the output data is going to be stored in this S3 bucket. Uh, obviously you got to create a service account uh, that is the IAM service role uh, which has access to all the services that you are dealing with uh, including S3, Bedrock, Runtime and so on. And then you can click on fine tune and it can basically kick off the fine tuning job. Then there is something called provision throughput. I'm going to come to that in a minute. So we looked at playgrounds. Uh, this is very similar to the OpenAI playground or the uh, Azure OpenAI playground that you may be familiar with. Uh, the interesting part is the knowledge base. So knowledge base basically generates the uh, vector embeddings for the custom data source that you have and also does similarity search. So you can create a knowledge base by giving it a name and then associating that with uh, an IAM role and then uh, basically connecting this with your source data. So uh, for example, you can upload the text files or the PDFs or CSVs to an S3 bucket choose that as the S3 bucket, uh, which is the data source from, from which the embeddings are going to be generated. And then this is the only embeddings model that you have. And there are three sources where you can store the embeddings as vectors. So vector engine for Amazon open search serverless, uh, Pinecone, which is a hosted uh, vector database and Redis Enterprise Cloud. So these two are going to live outside of AWS and this is native to AWS. So once you have uh, the open search serverless collection created, you can paste the ARN here, give the name of the vector and then uh, the, the, the fields. Uh, for example, the vector field responsible for storing the embeddings and then the text field, uh, which is going to come back with the context that you will ultimately use in RAG or retrieval augmented generation and uh, the metadata field which will actually show you the reference or the citation of the original data source so then you can click on next uh, at that point basically <clears throat> what knowledge base does is it, it, it's going to pull the data that you have pointed it to uh, which is an s3 bucket and then converts everything into vector embeddings so once you have the knowledge base you can go ahead and create what is called as an agent. So an agent uh, not only pulls the data from the uh, knowledge base, but it has the ability to invoke Lambda functions and uh, consolidate, aggregate all the outputs and then come back with an intelligent response. So uh, I'm going to explore this further and uh, share a detailed walkthrough and a tutorial with you. But for now, an agent is almost like a hosted lang chain. Uh, where you can connect this to an LLM, connect to a vector database, and then a, an API endpoint, uh, essentially powered by AWS Lambda. And then it's going to be uh, exposed as an endpoint that you can invoke. And it, it, it will come back with an intelligent answer that is aggregated from a variety of sources. So that is uh, basically what an agent is meant for. And then there is provision throughput. So what exactly is provision throughput? Well, um, the number of tokens that you can generate uh, from bedrock is, is limited. They're going to throttle after you cross a specific, uh, a specific threshold. So uh, if you actually look at the custom models and when you look at the info here, it clearly tells why you need provision throughput. So provision throughput has uh, three benefits. The first one is basically better performance. So what AWS says is once you hit 60 requests per minute or 10K output tokens per minute, uh, there is going to be throttling on the on-demand inference. So to avoid that, you can sign up for uh, provision throughput, which will give you guaranteed throughput even uh, when you go beyond these thresholds, like 60 requests per second, uh, sorry, uh, per minute, and 10K output tokens generated per minute. So uh, that is the first one. Second thing is, uh, because you don't have control on uh, how your inference 
service is going to be used, you cannot estimate the cost. Uh, whereas if you purchase provision throughput, you have better control because uh, you can draw lines, you can actually stay within the limits and you can budget how much you can factor uh, for inference. So uh, interestingly, <clears throat> custom models uh, need to be a part of the provision throughput. You cannot have them on demand. So uh, there is a very different price point. So if you actually look at the, uh, the pricing part of uh, Bedrock, it becomes very clear. So let's take a look at that. So let me take a look at the pricing. So if you look at the Bedrock service and uh, go to the pricing, it very clearly explains uh, how it's going to be priced. So uh, if you are actually looking at an Amazon's native LLM, so the provision throughput pricing uh, is something like this. So if you get two model units, uh, and this is basically for Titan Text Express with one month commitment for provision throughput. So two model units uh, into 1840 per hour, into 24 hours, into 31 days, translates to a whopping $27,279.20. So this, this is massive. But the advantage that you get is very predictable inference throughput and also a budget that you are committing. So uh, that is a quick overview of provision throughput and, and how the pricing works. So you can purchase provision throughput right here. Uh, you, can, you can go here and then give a name, for example, uh, select the Amazon's text G1 Express and then number of model units, let's say only one because we just want to deploy one model unit and then a one month commitment term. Guess what? You are going to end up spending roughly $13,248. Not roughly, that's exactly how much you're going to spend uh, if you are purchasing provision throughput just for one model unit and for one month. Now, what is not clear at this point is what does provision throughput unit, the model unit really mean? Uh, typically, when you buy the provision uh, IOPS or for example, in uh, open search serverless, when you buy what is called as OCU, the open search compute unit, they, they bundle uh, the number of cores, the memory, the EBS throughput, the bandwidth and, and uh, everything into one unit which is called the open search compute unit and, and it is very well defined. But uh, at this point, I am not able to find out what exactly a model unit consists of. Uh, what does it translate to? Uh, how many vCPUs uh, are there accelerators like GPUs or Inferentia? And uh, what kind of uh, storage throughput do I get? And uh, what is the number of requests per second I can expect? And are there uh, are there caching services involved? For example, can I can I rely on caching for repeated uh, queries instead of hitting the LLM? So uh, none of those details are disclosed yet, but they just call this as model unit. Now, one model unit for one month is going to cost you this. And if you uh, go to two model units and a commitment of six months, uh, it 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 will be reduced a little bit. Uh, so the longer you commit, the better the pricing is. So, <clears throat> so that is the uh, provision throughput. Uh, and if you if you come back to the console, uh, this is where we are. Now, what I find different from other services is uh, there are more providers. Obviously, uh, there is better integration with things like Amazon's own uh, open open search uh, serverless vector database. Agents is pretty cool, though I am at to try. So uh, this is Amazon Bedrock Console. In the next tutorial, we will take a look at the API uh, via Bodo 3. So stay tuned.